Hey Plamo Nerds, today we'll be doing an unboxing and review of the Sparmax Max 3 airbrush. Let's take a look. Alright, so what we have here is the Sparmax Max 3 dual action airbrush. Um, if you're not familiar with the company, Sparmax is a Taiwan based uh, manufacturer of airbrushing equipment. They make airbrushes, um, compressors, and all the accessories in between. Uh, this is one of their gravity feed models uh, from the Max series. So as you can see here, um, it comes in two variants, the Max 3 and the Max 2. So what I have here is the Max 3. It has a 0.3 millimeter nozzle, 7 ml color cup, uh, preset handle and 1 8 uh, PS fitting or, or that's the for the uh, air valve right here so a standard sized um, fitting for that it also comes with um, a single action valve so you can switch out that valve stem um, stick out stick on this single action uh, valve and basically convert the airbrush to a single action um, airbrush so the packaging is really nice really professional looking it's a cardboard outer layer here and slide out nice plastic case has an additional layer of plastic cover here let's just go ahead and peel that off protective layer I guess and this is the airbrush um, if it kind of looks familiar it's actually the same airbrush model I believe as the Tamiya Sparmax so I believe they partnered up with Tamiya for for releasing um, like an entry-level gravity feed airbrush um, under the Tamiya brand let's see what's inside so you get the airbrush here, nice chrome finish, very nicely polished. It says Sparmax Max 3 right there, and a serial number. Nothing else on this side, and it comes with the preset handle right here. So there's some tension to this. I guess that has a, like a, a rubber um, ring in there that helps control how far you you can turn that. Everything else is pretty standard fare. This design right here very reminiscent of the older Iwatas I guess. Very nice finish on this one, very nice chrome. Color cup, 7 ml, nicely polished inside, very smooth, don't feel any burrs or rough patches in there, which should be good for cleaning up. The lid here is attached with friction. Trigger action, very nice and smooth. Trigger pull here feels really long. It should give good control on that trigger. Nice and nice smooth action, both for the air valve and the needle. let's see what else we get inside the box so this right here is the single action valve stem so we could just switch that out switch this one out for this and 
we get single action airbrush. So let's give that a try. Take this one out. And you can see the difference between these. So this one has the spring-loaded valve and obviously this one doesn't. So stick that on there and basically um, the vertical movement is becomes pretty useless. So you could just hold that down and pull back and the air would just continuously flow out of the nozzle here when using this kind of uh, valve stem single action. So let's put that back. So I've already graduated from those single action airbrushes. Right. Simple. Now you'd want to, to use one of these if your compressor is a continuous um, continuous type. It doesn't have the the auto stop feature. Um, one example would the would be the uh, Tamiya Basics uh, Sprayworks Basic compressor. So it's a diaphragm type compressor. It doesn't have an auto stop feature. Um, so you wouldn't want a double action uh, valve sealing off that air because it doesn't have anywhere else to escape to. So I guess that's why they included this um, in this set, which is really nice. Uh, you get a nozzle wrench, which indicates that the nozzle on this model is uh, the standard screw-in type nozzle. So let's take it apart and see what's inside. Okay. So let's dis disassemble this airbrush. Take off the handle here. Nice weight to it. Not too light. Not too heavy either. Loosen up the needle lug. Take out the needle. There's a needle right there. a very long and linear taper to it very nice nicely polished all the way to the tip to the back here it's really um, thick almost as thick I guess as the uh, Eclipse needle but the, the taper on this really feels looks much longer so it starts from right here tapers off all the way here almost an inch on that taper and that's a good sign for um, control so the rest of the airbrush let's take out the trigger assembly here So it looks like um, you can adjust uh, trigger tension with this piece right here. Loosen it up, gives you a looser uh, pullback on the trigger. So it still springs back, but much softer to pull back. Let's take it all the way out. So I want to see how. trigger assembly looks yeah that looks like this is one piece it's a spring hmm. it's a new pretty unique design here usually you'd find um, like a stem which pushes down the the, the air valve but this one has these extra long um, rods on the sides here, which means, yeah. So the button that goes up and down for the air valve is much wider than what you'd find in, say, uh, an Iwata or a Badger airbrush. 
also this piece right here which is kind of a challenge to take out not even sure I can take that out so it looks like the rocker is attached to this uh, this is a stem that holds the spring so in in most generic airbrushes this rocker is just a loose piece take it out right from the top here so this one is attached to the stem right here which is good because that means it's easier to reassemble and also with this the design of the trigger the base of the trigger here that means it's much easier to, to take apart and reassemble than your standard um, your generic Chinese airbrush all right so let's just leave that in there I'm not sure if I can take that out let's leave that in there for now let's take a look at the front end so I'm taking off nozzle cap which is this fully protective nozzle cap The air cap has some kind of lube around the threads and as suspected we have uh, the screw in type nozzle right here which we can take off let's see if we can take it off just with our fingers here that's on pretty tight so I'm gonna have to use this thing very gently just loosen that and I like to use my fingers taking it all the way out so you want to use that nozzle wrench as seldom as possible Get a good look at this nozzle right here. Very small part, right there. Has a rubber O-ring on the base, and usually when I stick this back on, um, I don't even use the, no the the nozzle wrench. I just screw it back on with my fingers as far as I can make it go. And that's usually enough to seal it there so let's just reassem reassemble your cap goes back on you have the needle cap back on there moving to the back now Put the trigger in. So I'm guessing you have to stick it in this way, turn it sideways. Yep. Then replace the string, spring, sorry. that go all the way in spring tension is pretty soft anyway out of the box so no need to adjust that and now we need to stick in the needle very carefully hold that trigger down slide it all the way back in Needle lug goes on, and finally, handle. Really simple. Now, I believe you also get 
like a cleaning brush in there. Really nice. And in the box, the bottom here, you get an instruction manual. Don't have to go over everything here. Pretty standard stuff. So yeah, it looks like you can take that part out. Just a one pager. And a pamphlet for how to install the single action valve, which we already did earlier in the video. All right, so let's let's load it up with some paint and see how it performs. All right, now for the purposes of this demo, I have loaded the airbrush up with some Zerk uh, Green. It's a pretty thin paint, locally made lacquer, and we're going to be testing it at around. 25 PSI Let's see how it does Pretty thin lines No problem Atomizes paint very well. Spray a wider pattern now. Lagger strokes. Okay. It really sprays nice and smooth. As you can see, it's capable of about tensor thin lines, all the way up to, I'd say about half an inch spray pattern. The spray is really nice. Offers very good control on the trigger, very long trigger pull. Really good. And that is with pre thin paint, which, as we all know, is pretty thick out of the bottle. No tip dry there. Really good performance on this airbrush. I really like it. You will have no problems doing any kind of camo patterns, uh, pre shading, fades, things like that. It's a very capable airbrush really good all right so the Sparmax max 3 performed really well in testing I was able to achieve about a half millimeter thin line pencil thin line all the way up to half inch spray patterns for coverage it offers really good control on the trigger good trigger sensitivity also not too stiff not too soft so good response on the trigger there, a very long trigger pull for that linear taper. Um, cleaning it wasn't uh, too difficult, uh, the angle of the cup helps a little bit with uh, how you get to clean all the way to the bottom of the cup there in the paint reservoir. Um, but 
Also the angle of the cup kind of interferes with your finger if you hold the trigger this way, like I do. Um, that comes in contact with your finger. So that's one thing I might change in the design there. Um, but other than that, it's a really good design, really good build quality. Uh, for the price, you also get the single action um, air valve if you're using a diaphragm type compressor with no auto stop um, that's something you might want to look into so yeah for the price really good value for money I believe this goes for a little less than ninety dollars on the Sparmax website or you might want to check out um, a local retailer but overall really good performance wise that's the Sparmax Max 3. Thanks for watching.